Bonsoir. Bienvenue, mes amis. Good evening. My name is David Lynn, and on behalf of the Charlotte Sister Cities Board of Directors, I'd like to welcome you to this evening's special forum focusing on our city's relationship with the city of Limoges, France. This is the fourth in a monthly lecture series, each featuring one of Charlotte's seven sister cities. Before we get started, I'd like to pay tribute to students and teachers who are joining us this evening. We happen to know from our registration data that the following schools are represented in our audience. Carmel Middle School, Charlotte Christian, Charlotte Latin School, Hickory Grove Christian School, Myers Park High School, Metrolina Regional Scholars Academy, Providence Day School, South Mecklenburg High School, and a special shout out to their French teacher, Dawn Young, for her support, Waddell Language Academy, Weddington High School, and Charlotte Country Day School. We'd also like to pay special welcome to Lydia Ferguson, the newly named principal of the soon to be named Language Academy in Huntersville, which will offer French immersion and opens in August. I'd now like to share with you several slides, the first of which recognizes our special community partners. These are organizations that help us with publicity and also logistical support. And they are the Charlotte International Cabinet, International House of Charlotte, the World Affairs Council of Charlotte, Bridge House Law, Alliance Francaise of Charlotte, the American Council on Germany, the Zeitgeist Foundation, Charlotte International Rotary Club, Charlotte North Rotary Club, Sumpner Packaging, Waddell Language Academy, Charlotte Latin School, Charlotte Country Day School, Davidson College, UNC Charlotte, the Young Professionals of the World Affairs Council, the Young Professionals of International House, and the Great Decisions Lecture Series. If you're interested in learning more about our community partners, please visit our website, www.cltsistercities.org. Next, I'd like to thank members of our ReFounders Circle. The names you see here are members of our community who have generously contributed to the growth of Charlotte Sister Cities during our pre-nonprofit phase. We are months away from finalizing our 501c3 status thanks to the services and partnership with Bridge House Law. This next slide honors our steering committee. Throughout the past year, this group of 20 has helped to lead and direct our association. Their work, their service is deeply appreciated. And on February 5th of this year, two weeks ago, this group dissolved and formed in its place as our board of directors. Here you see the name of our directors and we'd like to welcome the newest members, Jennifer Duru Perry, Macy Shi and Joe Gallegos. I'd also like to highlight our student members, Cameron Oliver, who is a junior at Davidson College, and Sam Farnham, who is a junior at Charlotte Country Day School. I'd now like to share with you a paper that I have with me. This is a photocopy of a resolution signed by the mayor of Charlotte on July 27, 1992, the mayor at the time, whose signature is here, is Mayor Richard Vinroot. And this resolution declared and formalized the relationship between Limoges, France, and Charlotte, North Carolina. We are honored that Mayor Vinroot is with us this evening, and here to introduce him is the youngest member of our board of directors, Sam Farnham. Hello. Tonight, I am honored to introduce Mayor Richard Vinroot. Mayor Vinroot attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill playing on their basketball team under coach Dean Smith. Mayor Benroot was a member of the Charlotte City Council from 1983 to 1991 and served as mayor of Charlotte from 1991 to 1995. When asked about Mayor Benroot's incredible support of Charlotte Sister Cities over the years, Peggy West, the former executive director of Charlotte Sister Cities said, quote, Richard Benroot understood and valued the importance to the Charlotte region of all international connections, including professional, educational, and commercial, and was aware of the potential for Charlotte Sister Cities to pr promote each of these through its citizen diplomacy exchanges." End of quote. Thanks to Mayor Benroot's work, we have a wonderful relationship with Limoges. We are 
grateful that Andrew has been very supportive of Charlotte Sister Cities, both in the 90s and today, with the support of our website and current initiatives. Welcome. Fine. Well, thank you very much for that nice introduction. I appreciate that. What a gracious thing for you to do. Um, I, I, it was a great privilege to serve as mayor of our city. I'm a first generation American. Uh, my father came to this country from Sweden and we have French ancestry in that, and I won't, it's a long story, so I won't bore you with it, but um, a king of Sweden was a French during the time of Napoleon, and we are related to that uh, French Swede king. In any event, we were poor Swedes who came to this country. When I got to be mayor of Charlotte, uh, one of the great things I got to do in July of 1992 was participate in the city council decision uh, to make Limoges our sister city, one of seven. Uh, three of the other people who were intimately involved in that were Millie Cox, whom you'll hear from tonight, a lovely lady who was our honorary French consul, uh, Peggy Wesp, who was the person who really administered, as David does now, our sister cities program, and David Saxonmeyer, who was the grandson of Mayor Stan Brookshire, Mayor Brookshire, and we did our first sister city relationship with Arequipa, Peru. So we had three Charlotteans who had a sincere interest in sister cities. Um, we had a gracious visit from Mayor Alain Rodet and a delegation from uh, Limoges in November, four months after we adopted the relationship that you just showed the, the group, group on the Zoom call today. And Alain and a delegate came to our city and spoke that night. Incidentally, that I went with a group of American mayors and American company to Paris uh, for a week to deal with international issues in France. And Dean was nice enough to bring me to the assembly uh, and introduce me to the national group. It only got to the, uh, the document that established our relationship. I got an honor of France because I came to that country at about the time I adopted that relationship. Uh, a year later, in September of 93, I, my wife Judy, a, a number of other people, Peggy, Millie, David Sack, and others, uh, were lucky enough to go to the beautiful city of Lamotte. Hope you'll tonight the beautiful town hall. Uh, we had a reception. We stayed in the Royal Lim Hotel downtown. We visited the Porcelain Museum. We visited the tragic village of Orador outside of Bush where a terrible event happened during or just after D-Day. Uh, and had a wonderful visit and got to know and meet a number of people in the great city of Limoges. And thereafter, we had exchanges here. We came there in 94, 95, 96, 96, lost track of that. And then a, a great interest to me, I grew up in Charlotte, went to East Mecklenburg High School. In 10, East Mecklenburg High School won the state basketball championship here. And uh, I was a co-captain of a team many years earlier with a boy named Jerry Helms. Jerry was very interested in Limoges, and he organized our East Mecklenburg state champions to go to Limoges to play in a tournament of other high school uh, men and women. And I'm proud to say that the East Mecklenburg High School team didn't just win the state championship in North Carolina, they won the tournament in Limoges. So I feel a really long connection to Limoges from beginning until now, 29 years later. And I'm so pleased that you asked me to say a few words tonight uh, in response to Mayor Lombardi's uh, gracious reception for us to talk with them and talk with folks from Limoges. And I hope all of you will enjoy your relationship going forward with this great city of Limoges, our twin city, our sister city, Limoges, France. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Mayor Vinrud. It's always an honor to have you here. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Alexis Gordon. I am the Chief of Protocol and International Business Manager for the Charlotte um, and work in economic development. Um, I have been very lucky to have the chance to go to Limoges um, and be involved in the programs there. Um, what's really great about Sister Cities is that it is all about creating 
opportunities to work together and cooperate. And even in this case, we have uh, a really cool cooperation. Mayor Vinroot is a Tar Heel. And our next guest is from Duke. So if that's not cooperation in the Carolinas, I don't know what else it is. So uh, without further ado I, ado, I would really like to introduce you to our next speaker. He is here on behalf of the mayor of Limoges, uh, Mr. Crawford Palmer. Uh, some of you may also know him as a silver medalist from the 2000 Olympics. Um, and he is currently the general manager at Limoges CSP, which is an amazing basketball team, uh, speaking of basketball. Uh, with that, Mr. Palmer. Hello, thank you. Thank you very much, Alexi, for the, for the introduction. Um, I'd also like to thank the, the mayor of Limoges, uh, the town hall of Limoges, uh, for, for asking me to come on. Um, I've always been a fan of the whole Sister City program, uh, even though I've never been able to participate in it uh, individually. So I'm, I'm excited to be able to be here tonight with all of you. I'd like to welcome everyone who's, who's watching tonight or in the, you know, in the days to come. Um, you know, I'm very excited to be here. And, and once again, thank you for the invitation. Uh, just to, to go back to something that, that uh, Mayor Vinroot said, he's a, he's a first generation American. Uh, I, I suppose I could consider myself a first generation uh, Frenchman. Uh, and my experience in France began in 1993, uh, maybe just a few weeks uh, I arrived in France following the beginning of, of the relationship between Charlotte and Limoges in 1993. Uh, when I came, I, I, did, I did go to Duke for, uh, for three years from 1988 until 1991, played for the great Coach K. Um, uh, I, I hope the, I've tried to, to assuage some of the, uh, the animosity that, that you know, friendly animosity I'd like to think between between UNC and, and Duke. Uh, I get the feeling Charlotte's more of a UNC city, but, but I hope you won't hold it against me. Um, but I did, I did one of the first guys I signed in, in Limoges when I arrived there uh, at the beginning of, of the previous season was Marcus Ginyard, who some of you may know, uh, who's a, a, a UNC guy. So, so, you know, I don't, you know, but I also did have to balance it out by signing Demarcus Nelson a few months later. So we try and we try and keep things even. Um, but to get back just to the, to the you know, this relationship uh, between Charlotte and Limoges, I remember my first arrival in Limoges as a player in the late 90s and, and saw the, the, uh, the Bijumel, the sign uh, with, with Charlotte and, and thinking, you know, thinking how cool that was. Um, and to be here tonight is, you know, kind of a continuation of that. I think, that, you know, it's two cities that, that to me, it's, you know, fit, fit well together. Um, perhaps uh, underrated on the national scene, but, but regional powerhouses, cultural centers, um, uh, you know, business hubs for their regions, uh, or even nationally or internationally, and and basketball cities, you know, sports towns. So, so you know, I think my my presence here tonight is is based on that. Um, the CSP uh, also in 1993. It's a you know, it's a big year. Uh, won the European Championship, uh, the only French club to do so. Win the Euroleague. Uh, the top European competition. Uh, it's something you know, folks remember um, even more than the, than the numerous national championships. So I'm very honored also to, to work for the club. Um, to represent the most here tonight. Uh, I, uh, once again, I appreciate the, the introduction. And on behalf of the city of Limoges, I'd like to, you know, to uh, hear a few words from uh, our mayor, uh, Emile Roger Lamberti, uh, who had a few things to say. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends from Charlotte, dear Queen City, dear Mayor Vinroot, malgré mon impossibilité à être physiquement en direct avec vous, ce soir, je me réjouis de pouvoir vous adresser ces quelques mots à l'occasion de ce forum dédié aux relations entre Charlotte et Limoges, The Twin Sisters. Merci à tous de représenter et témoigner des excellentes relations qui unissent nos deux villes depuis 1992. Un cycle de projets en commun, plaçant nos ADN au cœur de cette amitié fraternelle. Culture, sport, santé, patrimoine, jeunesse, université, 
autant de thématiques menées depuis presque 30 ans au service de nos populations et de nos concitoyens. À travers la démarche que vous êtes en train d'initier et dont l'objectif est d'alimenter et de relancer les collaborations avec vos partenaires internationaux et célébrer une certaine idée d'humanité faite d'ouverture sur le monde, d'engagement altruiste et social et surtout d'une profonde compassion. Un message prenant encore plus de sens dans ces temps si particuliers. Permettez-moi d'adresser à messieurs Guillaume Lajoie et Crawford Palmer un mot personnel de sympathie pour avoir accepté d'être parmi vous lors de cet échange. Vous pouvez compter sur le soutien et la collaboration de la ville de Limoges pour vous engager avec vous vers de nouvelles actions au service du plus grand nombre. Bon forum et rendez-vous en 2022 pour notre anniversaire. Merci, Mayor Lamberti and to Crawford for these warm words of greetings from Limoges, France. We are honored by your message and we will continue to share your message with our community. It is now my privilege to introduce Mr. L.J. Stamba, who is the president and CEO of the World Affairs Council of Charlotte. It's the World Affairs Council that is providing the platform for tonight's webinar. And we also appreciate the work they did last Tuesday to welcome French American author, Elaine Scalino, uh, who gave a presentation to our community. Without further ado, Mr. Stamba. Thank you so very much, David. And I would like to thank you and, and to congratulate you and the steering committee and now the board of Sister Cities Charlotte. You guys are doing a great job. And as a sister nonprofit international organization, we're happy to support and partner with you. It is my great pleasure and, and with delight uh, to have this opportunity to introduce to you uh, Joel A. Gallegos, who is the Assistant Provost for International Programs and Senior International Officer at UNC Charlotte, where he oversees campus-wide internationalizations offer efforts, including education abroad and exchange, international students and scholar services, intensive English language training, intercultural outreach, and on-campus internationalizations efforts and programming. Gallegos currently serves on the board of directors of the World Affairs Council of Charlotte and is a trustee on the Fund for Education Abroad, a nonprofit association in Washington, D.C., committed to raising scholarship funds for students who are underrepresented among U.S. study abroad population. Previously, Joel served on NAFSA, which is the Association of International Educators Board of Directors, from 2014 to 2020 on their executive governance and endowment committees and chaired the organizational advancement committee. Joel holds a BA in foreign languages and an MA in French literature. He studied and worked in France for several years and has been traveling to France his entire life. Joel. Thank you, LJ, for the very uh, generous introduction. It's, um, it's really a pleasure to moderate this Limoges Forum this evening. Also, it's so wonderful to have such a great group of panelists whom you'll hear from in just a few moments. They're the perfect representatives to address our sister city program in Limoges. I'll just share that I'm thrilled to participate in this particular forum as I've had the privilege of visiting Limoges several times over the years within the scope of my work at UNC Charlotte. I've had the opportunity to travel with delegations of professors, with administrators, and I've even had the opportunity to accompany our former UNC Charlotte Chancellor, Phil Dubois, to a signing ceremony of the renewal of our university exchange program in 2013. It's always a pleasure to meet our colleagues and friends in Limoges, and we are always graciously hosted when we're there. We deeply value this relationship with Limoges and specifically the partnership that we share with the Université de Limoges. Our exchange students, our exchange professors, the teaching assistants we exchange have all been profoundly impacted by their rich and memorable experiences in such a marvelous place in France. So it's my pleasure to be part of the conversation this evening. I'd now like to get us started by inviting Lydie Sorger, president of the Alliance Française de Charlotte 
and member of the Charlotte International Rotary to introduce Millie Cox, a colleague and friend to all of us who does not necessarily need an introduction. Didi. Thank you, Joel, for this uh, nice introduction. It is really an honor and a pleasure to introduce Millie Cox. Millie is a native of Charlotte, but she grew up with a love of France. During a bachelor's study in political science, she spent one year in Paris at the famous La Sorbonne University in the art of the Quartier Latin. A career towards international relations and frankly is really impressive. She served as a director for the Council for International Visitor for the International House and later as a director of international study at Country Day School. During that time, she was on the Charlotte Tax Force with Jocelyn Zion representing Alliance Francaise, looking for a French sister city, a dedication, a openness, a kindness, and of course, a understanding on the French culture helped the relation between Charlotte and Limoges. Millie Cox was the honorary consul of France for Charlotte in 1991 and successfully held the position for 20 years before retiring. In addition, Millie also chaired the World Affair Council of Charlotte, International Education Tax Force with an international cabinet. Millie has been decorated as a Chevalier de l'Ordre National du Mérite and as a Chevalier dans l'Ordre des Palmes Académiques. Both medals, Orders of Merit National and Academic Palms, are national orders bestowed by the French Republic on distinguished academics and teachers for valuable services. Millie Cox, well deserved the honor to represent the French connection tonight. Please welcome Millie to the forum. Thank you, Liddy, for your kind words. And um, I wanna say thank you also to Mayor Lomberti for his kind words as, as well. Um, as you know, we started the sister city relationship in 1992. I think became honorary in 1991. And one of the first things uh, that there was to do is to start creating liaison connections between North Carolina and France in culture and education and sports and in business and in, in, in an education. Um, we were looking for sister cities and all of a sudden a wonderful lady named Anique Fonabes from Limoges found us. Um, she was representing the mayor's office. She was a private consultant, but she had been on contract with the mayor's office to find Limoges sister city. And she found us and started to tell us about this beautiful city, Limoges, which is about two hours south of Paris. Uh, I think about an hour south of Tour by, Fran uh, by train. And um, in early 1992, a group of us went to Limoges on a kind of exploratory trip. And uh, that was David Saxemeyer that Richard Van Root spoke so highly of. David, he worked for Nation, Nation's Bank at that time and spoke just beautiful French. And um, Bernard Cates, who was with KPMG Pete Marwick, also spoke beautiful French. His mother was French um, and me. And um, also um, a representative from um, our basketball, the Hornets team went. And we had a wonderful trip. We were, uh, the carpet was rolled out for us. We were just stunned by the beauty of Limoges. The city hall, I think is the prettiest. You saw it behind Joel just a few minutes ago. I think it's the prettiest city hall in all of France. Uh, they have a national porcelain museum there, the Musée Adrien du Boucher. And again, it's just one of the most beautiful museums I've ever seen of national porcelain as well as their municipal museum of enamels, enamels dating back to the middle ages and before. Uh, we in Charlotte had a very comprehensive global, uh, comprehensive porcelain con collection in our Dell home um, collection in the Mint Museum. And so that was a, in no way are we comparing with Limoges, their porcelain museum, but we had a wonderful, very proud of Dell Home collection at the Mint Museum. And that was a connection that we tried to pursue um, through the years. 
uh, basketball you've already heard of. That was the sports connection was something that we were aware of that Limoges had uh, a European champion uh, team and we had the Charlotte Hornets. And then business, uh, they had Esther, which was a new technopole. Uh, and they had the University of Limoges, their research research center there. And there was a very good link between business and the university as we had in the Charlotte Research Park. And already in 1992, um, Philip Dubois, who was vice chancellor of the university, and Harold Josephson, who was vice chancellor for international um, programs at UNC Charlotte, they also went to Limoges very, very much the same time we did and set up well, investigated setting up programs with engineering and also with research. And as uh, Joel just said, that's been renewed. They've been exchanging throughout the years. I think that one thing that really, when I was looking back through my files over the last few days, I've got hundreds of files in Limoges. It really struck me how many people in our communities from all walks of life and from all age groups have contributed and benefited from this partnership with Limoges. Bankers, lawyers, musicians, students, teachers, sports teams, citizens from all walks of life have been impacted by Limoges. There have been great high points, many high points, certainly with all the student exchanges, but there were a few points that were tragic. Two things I want to mention. I want to mention Julian Brown. He was a wonderful young man, high school student here in Charlotte, who was tragically killed in 2004 on a soccer trip um, to French cities. Julian's memory was honored in a wonderful soccer tournament that happened every year, starting around 19, uh, around 2004, I believe, 2005. And Limoges would send their young soccer teams to play. That was a wonderful connection. Then in 2003, January 2003, if you recall, there was a plane crash here in Charlotte. Um, and Mayor Rodet didn't waste one second. He responded with such a heartfelt letter to us. So our relationship, surely we've had wonderful moments of friendship and exchanges, but in when times get tough, Limoges has been there for us, and we appreciate that. The schools, I'm so glad to hear there are so many schools here tonight. Um, the schools that I was involved with in the very beginning when we were establishing partnerships were Mars Park and Harding and Butler and Providence Day and Independence and, of course, Country Day and um, Smith Academy, which is now Waddell. And uh, I think those were the early schools that we, where we started pairing. And very quickly, right after we signed the relationship in 1993, I think our first school came. And then it's just been rolling over ever since. And then new schools, this is great. I kind of stopped taking notes after about 2010. So I'm very interested to see what everybody's uh, going to say tonight. But I want to say that those early friendships, that first team that we had working so closely, Charlotte Sister Cities, Alliance Francaise, the mayor's office, and then what came to be the French American Chamber. Uh, we all were working very closely in the early years to get this partnership off the ground. So I thank you for having us tonight. Thank you for those remarks, uh, Millie. No doubt much of the success of this particular relationship that Charlotte shares with Limoges has been the result of Millie's many years of contributions and commitment to the partnership. Between Mayor Venroot's uh, remarks and Millie's, I think we all have a wonderfully rich uh, chronology and historical preparation uh, as we enter in, uh, in a few moments to the question and answer. I'd now like to invite Dr. Felicia Eibel, who is the principal of Waddell Language Academy, our CMS K through eight language immersion magnet school to introduce Nadja and Jaya, two students who visited Limoges. Good evening. It is my pleasure and my honor to introduce to you two amazing young women who are well-rounded, intelligent global citizens. Jaya Bolden is a junior at South Mecklenburg High School in the World Magnet Program. 
She is an honor student and member of the National Honor Society and secretary of the National French Honor Society. She participates in AAU track and field and is an athlete at South Mecklenburg High School where she participates in varsity soccer, basketball, and cross country. She is a member of Jack and Jill of America and serves on the executive board as courtesy chair. She attended Waddell Language Academy from K-8 in the French Immersion and Spanish program in middle school. She had the opportunity to travel to both Barcelona, Spain and Limoges, France as an exchange student. Her sister, Nadia Bolden, is a freshman at South Mecklenburg High School in the World Language Magnet Program. She attended Waddell Language Academy from K-8 in the French Immersion and German Program. She was an exchange student in Limoges, France in 2019. She is an honor student, member of student council, National Junior Honor Society, and Jack and Jill of America. She also participates in AAU track and field and is an athlete at South Mecklenburg High School, where she is a member of the soccer team and basketball team. It's my pleasure to introduce Jaya and Nadia. Salut tous. Uh, thank you, Dr. Eibel, for the amazing introduction. As Dr. Eibel mentioned, I'm currently a junior at South Mecklenburg High School and went to middle school at Waddell Language Academy, where I traveled to Limoges in my eighth grade year in 2018. Traveling to Limoges with my classmates and being able to experience Limoges culture alongside my, um, alongside my peers was a moment that I will never forget. Uh, while I was there, I attended classes alongside my exchange student, Tyra, at uh, Lycée Auguste Renoir. Uh, with my classmates, we took day trips to porcelain museums such as Bernadotte, a shop that produces porcelain and learned how the porcelain was fabricated. We toured uh, Cathédrale Saint-Étienne, the underground tunnel uh, de la Règle, and uh, also did some shopping downtown in Limoges. Uh, one of the highlights was visiting the small town outside of Limoges, uh, Oradou Suglan, and um, having the chance to meet Robert Hebra. Uh, and hear about his remarkable story. We visited the town hall where we also met uh, Mayor Emile Roger Lamberti uh, and uh, talked about the sister city relationship uh, Limoges has with Charlotte. On weekends, I traveled with my exchange family. One weekend, we took a day trip to La Rochelle, a coastal city in the southwestern, uh, in southwestern France and uh, took a boat out to the fam famous uh, Fort Boyard. My exchange student, Tyra, also loved to play basketball and we went to CSP uh, um, in a, a match uh, against Cholet. Uh, again, having the opportunity to stay in Limoges was an unforgettable experience. Hi, I'm Nadia Bolden. I went to Limoges in October of 2019 and I was actually one of the last groups to attend the trip because of COVID. Um, I stayed with the Mumi family that lived in the city for two weeks. Uh, they owned and ran a dentistry, and I attended the school at Auguste Renoir with my exchange student, Sarah, and I went to class with her. Most days, our class would go on field trips around Limoges. We would walk and take the bus to each destination. We, went, we visited places like La Cour du Temple, the Musée de la Résistance, uh, La Ville du Radour, uh, Bernardo, and Le Chateau de la Sour. On the weekend, I would spend time with my host family and I got to experience some of their favorite activities such as carding, uh, going to the farmer's market, bowling, going to the CSP basketball games, which are like really fun, um, shopping and bird watching. Unfortunately, because of COVID, my exchange student did not get the chance to travel to America and stay with me. But overall, I had an amazing experience living with them over there with my host family, going to their school and creating lifelong friendships with people from another country. Well, thank you, Jaya and Nadja. Um, I'm thrilled that we, have, that we have two students with us this evening and looking forward to hearing more during the question and answer period. Certainly, the value of exchange is extraordinary. And for young people to participate in these kinds of educational and cultural interchanges to, can provide really significant transformative experiences. And so, I'm sure that they'll carry with them their experiences for the rest of their lives. Um, clearly their French is beautiful. And, uh, and I'm so pleased that, that you both have joined us this evening. 
Now it's time uh, to invite David Gattu, Director of Athletics at the Charlotte Latin School and leader of their athletic exchange program in Limoges to introduce Guillaume Lajoie, who is joining us en direct from Limoges. Bonjour à tous. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Joel. I'm pleased to introduce my colleague in athletics administration and coaching, fellow Frenchman and friend, Guillaume Lajoie. While currently employed as the Chief Financial Officer at La France Limousin Selection, an organization involved in the Limousin cattle industry, it is his role a few years ago as the Executive Director of ISTPP, the largest child, youth, and adult sports association in Limoges, where Guillaume's path intersected with our city and personally with me at the school where I'm employed as Director of Athletics, Charlotte Latin. During his 15-year tenure from 2002 to 2017 at ISTPP, or ISPTT Limoges, Guillaume has organized, by my count, 12 trips to Charlotte for the youngsters of Limoges in of their sports interests, including football, not football, soccer that is, baseball, basketball, and wrestling. While offering experiences in all the best sports has to offer in this area, including practicing with, competing against local schools, Hornets and Panthers games, visits to UNC Chapel Hill and Davidson College. Guillaume also scheduled cultural activities, including trips to the Labine Museum, Museum of the New South and visits to the mayor's office and government center. From my perspective, it has always been clear one of Guillaume's main goals has been to provide fully immersive experiences for the children of Limoges. Through these immersive experiences, with ISPTT at Charlotte Latin, I feel fortunate to have been a front row seat observer to Guillaume's primary role of employing sports as the language of connection, unity, respect, and friendship. Music to the ears of all of us global citizens, right? Welcome to the panel, Guillaume Lajoie. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very much, David for your very kind words. Uh, so I have a long story with uh, Charlotte now. Uh, this story uh, started in 2007. Uh, at this time, uh, an, English teacher, an English teacher from Limoges, Jean-Michel Martin, was the main contact between our two cities. He built school exchanges and was a key contributor of these exchanges. The year before, with the ISPTT Limoges, we were in Germany for explore a change with the sister city of Limoges. After this trip in Germany, someone from the city of Limoges asked us to represent Limoges in Julian Brown Memorial Soccer Tournament. So we got very excited and jumped in this opportunity. So for this first trip, uh, we came in Charlotte with an under 13 soccer boys team. And Jean-Michel Martin came with us and Jean-Michel introduced me to its vast network and local contacts. After this first experience, uh, it became clear to us that we had a huge opportunity to build something special for the young sportsmen and sportswomen for our two cities. And so we did, and uh, I was very fortunate to come back every year between 2007 and 2014 with different teams like David say. In parallel, we organized Sister City Tournament in Limoges. In 2008, it was a baseball and soccer tournament. And in 2010, it was basketball tournament. And the mayor uh, talked about this tournament in, the, in his speech. And uh, in fact, uh, effectively, uh, American teams, Charlotte teams, win the two tournaments in, um, in girls and boys. And uh, we were particularly proud to be able to welcome Charlotte teams. And uh, during all of this first year of uh, this exchange, um, I was extremely fortunate to meet so many great people and many of them became friends at a personal level. Um, I want to, to speak about David Nichols because uh, David has managed host family for seven years. And uh, I want to speak about Jerry Ems because Jerry uh, did a lot of things to allow uh, um, Charlotte team to come in Limoges. However, the most pleasant for me was to see the joy and the excitement of the kids 
who were fortunate enough to take part to these exchanges. So the things run well, but the things stay fragile uh, because our exchange depended on two or three people. So we needed to build something stronger. So our wish was to develop a long-standing relationship with a high school. And one more time, uh, we were very lucky because people from Charlotte Latin School approached us in April 2014. And um, uh, I want to send a special thanks to David and to Derek Smith. Uh, he is online, I know, and Dick Superly. Uh, together, we built a new kind of, a new kind of exchange uh, because Charlotte Latin School host us and the kids spend a lot of time together sharing school practices, games, or video games, or hamburger, or a lot of very fun things. And uh, it's great to see we have the same vision of the exchange with people of Charlotte Latin School, to learn, to discover, and to open our mind. Now, our goal is to welcome CLS team to Limoges, and even if it will be a challenge, I believe we can do it. So since 2007, we have been able to send 100, 175 young athletes to Charlotte. And in return, almost 60 children from Charlotte came to Limoges. Sometimes people ask me, what are your best memory of your trip? In fact, my best memory are when I saw again some kids who became adults now, who told me how their trip is an unforgettable experience for them and how they feel so very privileged to have discovered your country, your city, your culture, the American way of life, and the American dream. Beyond sport, it was great to see one of your pupils who spent three months in Charlotte taking an internship at Keeper System Company. A special thanks to Steve Bocom. I know he's online too. Now, Steve, I look forward to helping you to develop your business in France. As David told you, my current job, my current job is a chief financial officer at export company dedicated to limousine cattle bread. Still in love with the Queen City, I'm looking forward to coming back to Charlotte to Charlotte to manage a sport exchange or around business for my job. Next year, our sister city anniversary could be a great opportunity to work together again. Thank you very much to all the people involved in what we have done. It matters a lot, and I feel very lucky for that. Thank you to the city of Limoges, who has treated, who has treated in me and in ISPTT Limoges. And my last word will go to Alexis, who is the best guide ever in Charlotte to explain how government center works and make things very easy and positive. Thank you uh, very much, Guillaume, uh, for joining us this late hour in France. Um, I know that your experiences have significantly contributed to the cultural vibrancy of the program in the past and, and looking forward during this conversation to hear a little bit more about your thoughts regarding how we can exchange and engage new populations to be equally as committed uh, uh, to the partnership on both sides. So now that we've all been introduced to this evening's wonderful panelists, it's my pleasure to now begin our Q&A session. I'll invite our panelists to join us. Um, what is the most popular food in Limoges? Um, I can answer. I think the most popular, sorry. I think the most popular food uh, is um, limousine meal because um, I work for limousine cattle breed. So I think it's the most popular food. Well, now that makes me hungry because I haven't had dinner yet, Guillaume. So that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on to that. Um, let me just start by asking a few questions to the panelists and, um, and then we can open up. Um, and I invite all of you to, um, to put your questions in the Q&A sections uh, of, the, um, of your Zoom. And we'll try to get to as many questions uh, as we can. I'd like to start out by asking all of our panelists if they could briefly share their thoughts regarding the greatest opportunities that our two cities still have for the future of the Limoges Partnership. I think everyone has been able to express some wonderful experiences that the Sister Cities Program um, has, has realized over the years. And 
what are some of the ways in which we can continue to build upon that success where we could really optimize an even closer relationship between our two cities? Perhaps we'll start with Mayor Vinroot. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not very technologically um, You're fine. capable. And my grandchildren were here, they'd help me do this. Um, you know, the, 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 the way this thing works is that some people like Millie and others take a real interest in having something happen. It just doesn't happen with a bureaucracy and having mayors and city council members and others just won't get it. Uh, if there are individuals in your communities who take a real interest, it'll happen. And we have such good things to show each other in our two communities um, that I, I can't imagine that the people online with us now won't step up and say, let's, let's, let's start this again. It's worth it. That's great. Millie, what are your thoughts in terms of opportunities that we still have? I think that you need to definitely keep all of the students exchanges going. Um, young people, I've been to the world, their lives changed forever um, because of exchanges. So much good comes from it. That is the number one most essential thing to do is to keep the high schools um, exchanging, the sports teams exchanging. I mean, we even had exchanges in the past. I mean, uh, I remember Johnson and Wales was involved with a culinary school over there. CPCC's jazz group had an exchange going with some musicians in Limoges. Um, the Mint Museum was looking at possibly having an exhibit of enamels. Um, that never got off the ground just because of the enormous cost. But I mean, there's lots of different ways you can look at this, but number one is to keep those student exchanges going. And I would be curious to know what other schools, what schools are currently exchanging with Limoges. I mean, Jean-Michel Martin, we all know Jean-Michel, who came for years and years and years with students from Auguste Rodin. Um, I know um, we had Butler High School, Independence High School, Marsh Park, I think I said them before, um, Smith Academy, uh, even I think St. Anne's at one point, uh, Providence Day. Um, so what other school, South Met, are they exchanging? Latin, Latin's now exchanging, I hear. Thanks, Millie. Yeah, I, I think that, of course, engaging students is really one of the best ways that we can keep it not only alive, but also invigorated and very dynamic. I guess with that, I'd like to ask both Jaya and Nadja some of your perspectives. Have you shared, you shared some of your experiences when you were in Limoges. Um, from a student point of view, where do you think we have the greatest opportunities in, in bringing our two cities even closer? Um, I would say almost the same thing as um, Ms. Cox. I would say opening up to more students because I know a lot of people, a lot of young people who would benefit from this just as I did. Yes, and I agree. Um, I know at my middle school or our middle school, EYDO, uh, we it was open to immersion students. And I think it would be great for, you know, beginners and French, no matter like what level of French you're in, like, could also go and like join the trip and like have as many people who are interested as possible. And I think I go to South Mecklenburg High School. I think it'd be great to have an exchange trip um, for the World um, Language Magnet Program and for French and uh, AP French students. And I think that would just be really great to incorporate there in that area. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think one of the best ways to get more people to even be interested is, is really getting you both and, and, and other students who have been able to experience Limoges out there talking about how wonderful your experiences are. And, and you know, that becomes infectious to get really a lot more people um, engaged. I'd like to ask Guillaume, from his perspective and his work in France, um, are there ways in which we can still optimize new opportunities? And if so, what are some of your thoughts in that regard? Um. Maybe to an American uh, a basketball player, he uh, uh, will have a job for you. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's a good start. I, you know, during all this conversation, I'm really excited. I want to keep my job, but you got to be good, though. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I'm thinking with all of these opportunities that we have a really new dynamic um, athletic director at UNC Charlotte. I think I introduced him uh, to a few of you. Uh, he's been with us for a few years, but um, but I think it would be really great to get some UNC Charlotte engagement with with our athletic. Yeah, I think there, I mean, I was, uh, and I was, it was, I've been taking notes and and, and I'm going to get in touch with, with Guillaume afterwards. I think there's a real, um, you know, just in, in terms of sport, or the, the way that, that our, we have a, uh, a developing program in Limoges, it's, it's, it's really one of our, in the, at the CSP, which is one of, our, one of our focuses, one of our priorities. It hasn't been uh, extremely well developed in the past, uh, but we've got some great young kids. And, and even with the pros, I think, I think the, there, is, there would be opportunity for exchanges you know, once, once COVID settles down and, and international travel becomes a little more uh, uh, peaceful, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, to, you know, to, to have exchange with, you know, I'd love to bring teams uh, to the Charlotte area. I'd love to bring the pro teams to, to the Hornet facilities. Uh, I'd love to have, you know, basically the, 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 uh, the age groups in France is under 21, under 18. So it's basically a, a, a college age group and a high school age group. Um, and I think it could be interesting whether it's with UNC Charlotte or whether it's with high schools in the area, a programs um, to, to develop something. Um, if, you know, and, and if, if you folks have experience, Guillaume, Alexis, uh, Alexi, uh, to, to, to begin to organize that, probably might, not, might be tough to do this year. But in the future, I think it's definitely something that we would we would love to look into, um, you know, to just to, to provide other opportunities for the for our for our players. Uh, I think the, the French basketball system is is unfortunately very limited in the sense. Uh, and it's one of the things that, that it's hard to get around is the way the, the system is set up is that the the in, in the U.S. sports is linked with schools um, with AAU and with summer programs and. And things like that, it's it's changed a little bit, but in France, it's basically you you play basketball or you go to college. You can't do both. Um, and I think to 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 you know, and even in high school, like our kids, to, to to have them be able to come to the states, see how things function, um, see the the you know the importance of academics and athletics, uh, that it can go together. Um, I think that could be that you know just be good to 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 open kids' minds. Um, so if that's something that we could organize, I'd be, I'd be all behind it. That's a great overview, Crawford. Thank you. Um, and looking at questions that um, have come in, there's one specifically that's directed to Jaya Nadja. Could you share a little bit with the audience um, your absolute best or favorite experience uh, when you visited Limoges? We know you have a lot of them. So what was your absolute favorite experience? Um, I guess I would say my favorite experience, I had a lot of of them good experiences but maybe my favorite was on the weekend we went karting with like the whole family and a bunch of other students and it was like really fun because I had never really done it that way before and yeah that was probably one of my best experiences um I think experience oh it's hard uh it was probably going uh going to the uh, village outside of Limoges, en radur sur man and meeting Robert Hebra. Um, that was, uh, and just like hearing about his story and how he survived um, such a, like a, tra a tragic moment in his life, that was really um, crazy. And that was like one of, like, it was really eye-opening and that was one of my um, favorite experiences, I think. Certainly, that uh, visit to radur sur man that certainly is a very, it's a moving experience, isn't it? <laughs> be able to see something like. Um, another question that came in, and I'm going to direct this to both Guillaume perhaps and Crawford. Um, someone had asked, um, how can an American um, go about getting a job in France? They love Limo so much, they want to come and move there. I think you, 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 you. You can answer this question. Uh, I, I would say, uh, you know, the things. Uh, I think the the, the labor lands are, are relatively complicated. I think there are there are segments of the of the economy. Uh, I think you know, a little, little bit in America where if, if there's need, 
Um, I think the 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 relationship between Charlotte, you know, this relationship with the program could be a way to, you know, I think to to the piston, to ceux qui comprennent français, parce que c'est des pistons, un saint fait, to be able to have to have people push in ways that nowadays I know there are opportunities for nurses, there are opportunities for people in the healthcare industry. Uh, you know, they have, they're, they're generally exceptions. Uh, I think one would come on, then, you know, things might be a little, a little, a little easier now. Travel health is, is limited. And we, uh, people will be able to, to get this, um, for, you know, if it's for nursing, if it's for, you know, for things that people really need uh, in this time. And if they're really good basketball players, uh, David or you, you my phone number <laughs> awesome. and we'll take a look awesome thank you there was a question that came in um, there's a global education liaison at, and a, who is a french and spanish instructor at stanley community college and and um and she had asked um who could she get in touch with about student exchange opportunities and i think maybe millie could could provide us some insight i know from the university point of view at the university level you know, you're welcome to connect with me and i could guide you through at least some processes of what a university exchange might look like, but Millie has worked in international education for many years. You might be able to shed some light on that. From, from this standpoint or from the most, I mean, the way that, that we uh, first visited, um, were connected schools in Limoges were, was through the mayor's office, the mayor's office in Limoges. And of course, I went through Peggy West first. Peggy was a Charlotte sister city chairman. There's kind of a protocol that you go through. So Charlotte Sister Cities chairman or the board, I guess there's a board for Sister Cities now and let it be known that you want to exchange over there and then they connect with the mayor's office and then through the mayor's office they, in Limoges, they set up appointments for you to visit certain schools that would pair with you. That's what I would suggest. Great, thanks Millie. There was a question that came in from Jane Zimmerman, a, a, um, a fellow board member of the Sister Cities, and she's asked specifically Jaya and Nadia. Um, she mentions how beautiful your accents are. And so she <laughs> wanted to know if you spoke French the entire time you were in Limoges and, um, and did, were you able to um, meet with uh, French people from Limoges and practice so that they could practice their English? Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much uh, for, for that compliment. Um, yes, we... Um, the group I went with, uh, which was my uh, classmates, that we were we've been together since like we've all like spoke French since like we were six years old. So it was like great um, going over there and like us like getting to like um, to be with exchange, our exchange students and practice our French. But um, my with my experience personally, uh, my exchange student she wasn't as uh, well. She wasn't like she didn't have um, that many great English skills. So I spoke French mostly the entire time. And um, in my family as well, I mostly spoke French with them. And I think the mo her mom was, uh, she had learned a, a little bit of English, but most of the time I spoke French with them, yes. Yeah, it's almost the same for me. I spoke French basically almost the whole time I was over there. And um, I would help her sometimes with her English homework. She'd ask me questions. And like sometimes she'd say things that weren't quite right, so I'd like have to help her with it. But yeah, mostly French the whole time. Well, that's uh, <laughs> as we say in French, ça se voit. You could actually <laughs> tell that your French is great. <laughs> um, uh, thank so, you. Uh, je vous en prie. Um, so um, another question that came in, and it's in the topic of uh, education, and someone asked that maybe this is for uh, Guillaume and Crawford. Um, our institutions, um, are they exploring or, or within the course of COVID <coughs> the pandemic, um, have institutions, uh, are you aware, um, have they developed online exchanges and other sort of online virtual programs? Um, I think for, for sport, sports exchange, it's difficult to have an online exchange. So, um, it's possible to have lesson in French online, but not sports, or maybe esports, but uh, we don't have esports. Uh, I think 
question, if the question is to is to you know when you when we when we speak about exchanges, you know, I think we've all learned uh, to adapt, even if we sometimes have problems with the mute with the mute button or the camera. Um, we've all learned to to use Zoom. I think I think uh, you know kids are much better better at it than than we adults. But the you know there are ways to to function um, in, in the jobs we have. Uh, we you know we've seen across Europe uh, the the difficulties that that sports leagues are having in order to you know we'll see you know the the, the anticipation is always that that COVID will will stop or we'll find a way to 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 function and get people back into into the gyms and 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 facilitate travel um, for teams. It's been a real you know it's been it's basically been half of our job. Uh, this year, you know, this year and, and last season, since since you know, basically for the past for the past year, um, the the complications that everyone has had, but in sports in particular, uh, it's been it's been an issue. Um, so, in in terms of exchange, I think it's hard to develop. It might be hard to develop new ways, of um, but I think it's it's happening organically. Um, you know, people people need contact. People want want to maintain relationships, uh, develop them. Uh, but I think with, with vaccinations and with things like that, as we as we slowly come out of it, we're you know we're in a new we're in a new world order. We're in a new a new paradigm. Um, so I think we're all you know everyone's adapting and evolving. Um, so I would say you know things are tough now uh, online. Uh, you know it works. You know imagine what it would be like if we didn't have the internet. Like some some of us here remember when that when this didn't exist. Like this meeting wouldn't have been possible. Um, mm -hmm. But but it does now, and I think it's a, I think it's a, it's you know it's allowing us to continue to function. So development will be tough, but I think you know to, to anticipate uh, coming out of this whole this whole crisis, this pandemic, um, things will be easier. Um, but you know we'll, we'll, we're adapting new ways to, to to function. And I'll just add from the institutional at the higher education point of view, we certainly are exploring. Uh, virtual partnerships with, with the Université de Limoges. In fact, I was recently communicating and um, I think maybe many of you know Laurent Bourdier and um, he uh, was in the engineering program, I believe, and he's going to be assuming the vice presidency for international. And so we're communicating with him to hopefully develop more virtual exchange programs between UNC Charlotte and Limoges. So looking forward to that. I know that in the interest of time and many of you are probably rather hungry. And so I think the time has come now to, to begin to close uh, our question and answer session. But I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for sharing your insights, your perspective, your inspiration, and also the history of this wonderful partnership. I think it has given us all ideas in terms of how we can continue to be dynamic and thrive. And, um, and while we, we can um, celebrate the various um, many, many accomplishments that, um, that, have, um, that have been made over the years, we have wonderful opportunities ahead of us in bringing our two cities much closer together. And so thanks to all uh, of the panelists. I uh, appreciate you joining us this evening. And, uh, and with that, um, I will hand it over to Dave. Thank you, Joel, and thank you to this distinguished panel. It's now my honor to introduce our closing speaker, the Honorable Laura Meyer Wellman, who, is the Honorary Consul of France, Emeritus, to the Piedmont region and Western region of North Carolina. She held that capacity from 2011 until January of 2021. and was an amazing resource and public servant in our community. She's the former president CEO of E4E Relief. She's currently the president of the International Women's Forum, Carolina chapter. Crawford will be happy to note that she is a member of the Duke University Board of Trustees. But most interestingly, her daughter, Edie, who is a student at Providence Day School, was involved in an exchange in Limoges, France. So her family is very much a part of this relationship. Honorary Consul Wellman, welcome. Um, thank you so much, Dave. And it is my pleasure to close out. I know some of you haven't had dinner or dessert or both. Um, so. I wanna just take a couple of minutes here on two fronts. One is on the professional front, I wanted to ensure that group here was familiar with the Consular Corps. Uh, Consular Corps is a group of 20 countries in North Carolina uh, represented here in our state. And we have over half of them 
Mm -hmm. Charlotte. So very proud of that. France has Haitians, one here in Charlotte and one in Raleigh. Germany has uh, two as well. And there is actually a consulate, but unfortunately not in France. It is the consulate of Mexico um, in Raleigh. So a very important, from a uh, very important country from that standpoint. But the, the value of having a consulate corps is that the network have is so strong between and among different countries. And that kind of sharing, and in fact, some exchanges that take place that is pretty powerful as well. But the personal story is not mine. Um, it's actually our daughters, Edie, as Dave alluded. Um, uh, Edie was in 2006, a junior at Providence Day, who had the sister cities two weeks. I'm so sorry because she really, really wanted to be here tonight. She's um, taking classes for a master's and uh, tonight was not working. So um, I will speak for her, but also from our own observation. Uh, and I thought it was great to have uh, Jaya and Nadia talk about their experiences because it paralleled 10 years earlier the experiences that they uh, that they had. And it is also a reference to the difference in educational environments that people experience. Um, Eve arrived, actually, um, she actually arrived in uh, Limoges in March of 2006. And for any of you um, on the history buff side, that was a very interesting time to arrive because it was the uh, period of the uh, CPE or the Contrat Première Embauche, where there was massive demonstration throughout the country of France uh, around protesting what at the time was the um, Prime Minister de, uh, de Vipin's process of trying to uh, limit basically the um, contract of employment. And this in France, people value that extra time. They value the tenure of employment and it caused a mass series of demonstrations, including in Limoges. And we got to live through that experience that she had um, through her letters and calls during the period where she stayed with her wonderful French sister, uh, Justine Fiu. And I thought what was interesting there is the, the parallel of life is very different. Um, she spent her time after class going to cafes, to the town square, meeting friends, meeting people, connecting in a way that Frank don't do in the United States as casually. That happens a little bit more in certain college campus environments, but not in our high school environments in nearly the same way. The economy that students had to have that pride private time together, coupled with what she valued on the other side were three hour dinners with family. And she spoke so highly of that because it had been a while and interviewed her for um, as a reminder. And her reaction kept coming back to, I need to go back to Limoges. I must get back to Limoges. She started talking about the beauty of the city, but also the beauty of the lifestyle and the environment that she had there. Uh, to, uh, she got to experience her, her French sister Justine's um, talent show where Justine uh, performed uh, Quand on arrive en ville and our a singer as well. And it was so much fun for her to see the environment of in, um, in France. The point at hand is more that there were differences and there were many things that were the same. Um, the value of family, but also the differences in the, the lifestyle that students were able to lead because they weren't driving. They weren't drinking a lot. They were just connecting and being together. Um, and it was a much more um, uh, casual environment in that respect. The parallel came when Justine visited us and her two weeks found Edie slammed with exams, slammed with her after school abilities. Uh, we got to visit with Justine probably more than Justine's family got to visit with Edie. And I think that says a lot. It's a reminder of the intensity 
of the lives that some of our kids that I, I'll go to uh, or to tonight, um, you know, who, what they have led. The opportunity to have served as an consult an extraordinary experience this past 10 years. It's not, not identified yet. They're working on it. Um, this is uh, a process that the uh, in Atlanta is going through. But I know we will end up with a very talented person in place. Charlotte is such an important city. Coming on the heels of my great friend and amazing mentor, Millie Cox, in this regard, um, pleasure. And having experience of getting to know Millie well before the appointed honorary consul. The consular corps around thing value. Being able to meet Earl Limoges in the late 90s, uh, or the early 2000s, I'm sorry, during that year, um, again, before I was uh, on consul, was very powerful. So I guess the net message is exchange programs, Millie, you are so right, are really, really key. The power of sports, the power of food. Uh, I make a pretty good clafouti, uh, but not with cherries, uh, which is the specialty in Limoges, but uh, with plums, easier to pit. But I will tell you that uh, that's a favorite of our daughters as a function, of course, of her time there. So the connection, whether it's art or sports or culture or just plain living, is an experience that Limoges provided. I've spent time in many parts of France, as has my husband, and we have not spent time in Limoges. And uh, I would like to ask my my Duke friend Crawford uh, to welcome me and welcome us if we find our way uh, to Limoges, the city um, that I would like to do more than drink from the China Cups that our wonderful uh, Justine had brought to us. So I want to thank this group tonight enormously, uh, Dave and Alexis for the coordination, uh, LJ and Jesse for the w, uh, World Affairs Council sponsorship. And say bon appétit and uh, santé to everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you very much, Honorary Council Wellman. We appreciate your thoughtful words and even more so your service to our community. I'd also like to express appreciation to everyone involved in this evening's forum, both behind the scenes and those who served as panelists, moderator, speakers and introducers. We are grateful. And, and also a special thanks to Crawford and to Guillaume who joined us live between one o'clock and two in the morning from France to be a part of this evening and to Mayor Vinroot and Mayor Lombardi for their special words. I would like to provide an invitation to everyone who's watching. I believe we had up to 90 at our peak this evening uh, to take part in our Sister Cities Scholars Program. The Charlotte Sister Cities Scholars Program is open to everyone who views or watches or views recordings of all seven of our forum series and completes a corresponding questionnaire. You'll find this evening's questionnaire in the chat for this forum. You'll also find it on our website. Those who complete all seven will receive a special certificate and their names will be recognized on our website. I'd also like to offer an invitation to join our Limoges Committee. This is a group of community members who are interested and continue to build our special relationship with Limoges. We look forward to restarting exchanges and welcomes and cultural celebrations. And also on July 27th, 2022, next year, we'll be celebrating our 30th anniversary of this special partnership. On March 10th, Wednesday, March 10th at seven o'clock, we will be offering our fifth forum series, this time featuring Baronish Russia. We hope that you will join us and registration will be available soon. Our organization is a volunteer organization. We look for members, we look for people who wanna get involved and take action. So if this interests you, please visit our website, www.cltsistercities.org. I'd also like to once again, thank our community partners who you see here. Thank you very much, everyone. Merci encore, bonne nuit.